The people's business is made possible by our partners. Solar Dynamics, the most efficient energy systems. Good evening and welcome to The People's Business. Today we'll be looking at the fundamental role of CBC in nation building over the past 60 years. And to help me this evening, I have with me Dr. Alison Leacock, former CBC General Manager, and she's Chairman of the Barbados Broadcast Authority. I also have Mr. Julian Rogers, a media consultant and no stranger to the pine, along with Peter Thorne, a former news editor here at the CBC. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the program. And welcome to you, our viewers. I'm Wendy Burke, and we'll be right back after the break. Okay, let's get right into it. CBC and its role, 60 years. How fundamental would you say they have been to the development of this nation? And I'll begin with Dr. Leacock. Thank you, uh, Wendy, and congratulations to CBC on this milestone. I think a national broadcaster is a pivotal player in building national identity. And as a result, CBC from its inception has been the singular television station for the country, even with the advent of external channels and external programming, they have continued to be the force as they should be for disseminating information, building national unity and identity, um, preserving our cultural heritage and promoting it educating the public and building public awareness of who we are as a people. And more recently, it has been absolutely essential that CBC and other broadcasters in the region adapt to the technological changes that are upon us. So a national broadcaster has multiple roles, but the, the singular one that should remain a focus as far as I'm concerned is the fact that they are catalysts for the change in any society to be very aware of who we are as a people. On it, Peter. Peter, what's your take on CBC's role? Has it been fundamental in this island's development as far as you're concerned? Well, thank you very much for offering me the opportunity to sit between two gems of the Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation and the media in general. Uh, before I go on, I want to offer my colleague, um, Dr. Liko, heartfelt congratulations on our Order of the Republic. It would be remiss of us not to congratulate her because um, that would have been built not only in her role of the National Transformation Initiative CEO, but certainly in terms of the media, which she have played a stellar role with the Broadcasting Commission, She's also been at the VOB and she's also, also been at the CBC. So, Alison, heartfelt congratulations and I've worked under her as general manager and she was a stellar example of what a good manager should be at the Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation. To the substantive question as to whether CBC has played its role, I think if you look back for the last 60 years, certainly the last six decades, um, you have to ask the question whether CBC has been able to educate, inform and entertain the people of Barbados and the public. And I certainly think so. The, res the answer would be a resounding yes, in my opinion. Uh, I think they have been able to reflect the mores, the ethos, the values of Barbados. Uh, they have been able from certainly when I was a boy, I saw the 1976 Olympics. I saw numerous cricket games. I saw the Parliament of Barbados the state opening. I saw NIFCA. I saw World Cup. I saw the death of major figures. And, you know, wherever there has been something national and international, CBC has stood the test of time. Whether it could have been better is another question as a public broadcaster. 
Very and I believe serious. we'll get to that as we go on in the program in terms of where the corporation is going in terms of its future. So I'll just let you wrap up and then I'll throw to Julian so we can continue on, Peter. Yes. Correct. Whether it would have been better served as a non-profit organization or whether it would have been better served if there was a, a commercial entity, that is up for debate. That is up for our question. But the interesting issue is in this uh, whole scenario is that successive governments, the Democratic Labour Party, the Barbados Labour Party, all have held on to CBC. Whilst prime ministers over the years have said that they were divested. Even now, within the BERT program, the BERT 2 program, we had heard that CBC would have been divested. Just another pie in the sky um, promise. Because um, when you come to divestment and you come to divesting public transport, you come to divesting all other, so other sectors, the key is in terms of divestment, except we have seen in Jamaica, we have seen in uh, Trinidad and Tobago where they have gotten rid of JBC and T T TNT. Um, Barbados has kept it going. And you have to ask the question as to whether uh, a, a corporation with over $100 million in debt, whether that stands the test of time and is worth the, the investment in terms of public coffers um, going forward. And in another six years, where uh, will there be a CBC still around? Another okay. 15 years, perhaps. These but I think what we need to look at right now, Peter, is where we are and what we've done, because that's what this program is about, reflecting on the substantive areas that CBC has developed in our national landscape. And I'm going to come to you now, Mr. Rogers, because you've been in it and you've also been watching us from outside. Do you think we've played a fundamental role over that 60 years? Thank you very much, Wendy. Well, first of all, I, I think we need to go back to what the mandate was for CBC, uh, going back to 1963, when the national hero, uh, His Excellency uh, Errol Walton Barrow, determined that Barbados should have a radio station, first of all. That the station came on in December of, of, of that year, and then subsequently television introduced in, in 1964. And of course, you've had um, the subscription television service also are coming on board. I think that the the debate about CBC really requires us, yes, I agree with you, to look back and to see what the the corporation has produced for Barbados. It certainly has provided in the first instance a link with the rest of the Caribbean. Uh, if you look back to what Radio Barbados was, it was a transmission from Bridgetown. It was picked up across the Eastern Caribbean. Subsequently, television did a similar matter as well, because uh, you could see it in St. Vincent, in Dominica, in Grenada, and in Trinidad, etc. What has, what has happened over the years is that you've been able to present Barbados uh, to Barbadians, uh, particularly through television in particular. Uh, less or so, I think, in terms of, of radio for, for a long time. But there is no gain saying that you have contributed to nation building. You've given uh, the Barbadian audience an opportunity to hear and see itself and therefore to provide, as far as I'm concerned, in some instances, a, a, release, a release valve for, for some of the pent up energies and, and, and creativity in Barbados. Certainly not enough. I know we can all look back and, and say we could have done a lot better over the years, but I think it is not necessary to, to knock CBC uh, for not having performed in some of the areas that we expected it to. There are some constraints, and I think Peter's begun to focus on some of that. But I think in, 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 in reality, nation building requires not just CBC, but it certainly requires many other players to get involved in that process. Where that has happened, it has worked. Where it has not happened, it certainly has been a hindrance to the development of the corporation. We'll talk okay. a lot more about that. We will, let me return. If I can come to Dr. Lee Conk now, something that Julian just touched on, where he spoke to the fact that some of us might say it didn't develop, like say the creative sector in as much as it could have in terms of our orange economy now. There used to be a lot of local programming of the theatrical arts. It's not 
as big. Uh, do you think we could have or did enough in terms of showcasing the talent we have on stage? That's something I'm going to pause on only because what has emerged, I think, is a recording of what is. Whereas CBC's genesis demonstrated that CBC initiated a number of productions themselves and high quality productions, I might add, where something was not happening locally for them to record and rebroadcast or tithe, they created their own productions. And that I think is something that as a national broadcaster was certainly uh, a big fillip to building national identity and exposing our creatives. We still have the opportunity to do that, though. And I think CBC alone cannot do it. Uh, during my tenure, I felt, felt it was really important to leverage the skill sets and the inclusion of independent producers, because together with our local crews, we were able to cover quite a bit. And I still think that uh, a national broadcaster needs to be able to reflect all that is happening, not only um, what is staged, but where there are activities that are of relevance to who we are as a people, that we, CBC, would be there to capture it for people who cannot go to it. Of course, now we have the added advantage of streaming, and that has introduced another dimension we have a number of other media entities that are also broadcasting in the true sense of the word. So there are opportunities now that really should not prevent us from showing even more local content and creative uh, expressions by our artists in the country. So to my mind, uh, CBC did a good job. You, we had quiz shows, a number of productions, there can be no really forgetting the important role of CBC in the building of acceptance of crop over and our Calypso tents, uh, CBC carried them. And a lot of people were able to become familiar with the material well before the, the pick of the crop uh, competition. But of course, things must evolve. So I'm not suggesting that you revert to that status quo. But I think there are so many more platforms now that can be leveraged for the CBC to showcase all of what uh, the NCF and others are doing in the country that okay. we should certainly be able to salute our artists. When we return after the break, we'll talk some more about some of those areas that the corporation has built on, both in terms of television and radio. On behalf of the corporation, I want to thank you on your honor, Dr. Lee Kong, and I also wish to apologize for the absence of Mr. Vic Finans, a former general manager who is was advertised to be with us tonight, but unfortunately due to illness cannot be. So we'll take a break. Lady and gentlemen, and we'll be right back. And we're back. We're discussing the fundamental role of CBC on nation, on nation building over the past 60 years. Now, one of the things that I've heard said from the time I would have joined CBC back in the day is that it has always been an excellent trading ground. And a number of the broadcasters and news anchors who've passed through have gone on to do great things. I think you, uh, Dr. Leacock, are one example, so too is Mr. Rogers. But how do you feel generally, um, Peter and Julian and Dr. Leacock, about CBC's role in being able to develop the profession and giving um, the foundation necessary to move on to various roles and spheres within this nation? Peter? Well, certainly, thank you, Mandy. I believe that when you come 
to the Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation. Some people say it's an acronym, cannot be compared. Um, certainly, um, you are prepared to work in any profession. And you would know that many people, many personalities, many faces have left the CBC and have gone on to work in many different organizations and have made uh, outstanding contributions to those organizations. Um, CBC gives you the opportunity in terms of preparation that after you are finished there, that you can work certainly not only regionally or internationally, you can work any part of the world and perform with credit and aplomb. I believe that um, it has been a good training ground. Um, it has been a good family in terms of um, both radio and television. Um, if you came in as a youngster, you had the necessary um, support, the necessary um, backative in terms of personnel who wanted you to succeed, who wanted to see CBC succeed. Because if CBC doesn't succeed, who tells the story of Barbados? Somebody has to tell the story of Barbados. And I believe that um, from back in 1963, when CBC was founded, uh, the, the story of Barbados has been told uh, could have been told better, but has been told resoundingly and fittingly by the Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation. And okay. I believe that we have had some excellent personnel that have passed through the CBC's doors. And Julian is one of those individuals who's now known across the Caribbean. Yeah, certainly, there's no, there's no doubt that uh, many of us have had an opportunity to grow and develop in the CBC environment. Um, I look at myself really just to age just a little bit with the first television program I ever did was was uh, Heinz Hotline going back to 1969. I was doing that under the aegis of uh, Smith and Oxley with John Oxley, my mentor. Um, but that was my first um, foray into television. And um, we have a famous reaction from Vic Brewster uh, who at the point of my, my floundering on the show, said that boy has been in radio too long. But I recovered several, several years later uh, to come back to CBC in 1977 at the invitation of George Hall and Anthony Best to be the anchor of 60 Minutes, which was introduced then by Tony Best as general manager, uh, along with Margo Manning and, and Sylvester Ford and, and Trevor Thorpe. So that I had an opportunity to grow as far as television was concerned. I come back to CBC back again in uh, 81 after another stint at Radio Antilles and uh, did the afternoon show at the, the Rail JR uh, for several months. And in that period, of course, I, I had a chance to go back in my, into my management role of, of media because I acted for a stint as the head of uh, radio production to allow Elama Motley to go off and do crop over. Uh, so that over the years, I think people like me, we've all had an opportunity to be in the CBC environment. Yes, um, it's been fun. Uh, I can look back to Arnold Dial and, and so on in the newsroom. Um, really, you know, we, we, we had great fun. But I think that the the environment was one in which um, we really had a we had an opportunity to grow to grow and develop. I think most importantly because of some of the the managers at CBC over the years. I certainly have the healthiest respect for for, for George Hall, who I think um, uh, did something that I, I'll never forget. Because when I came back to Barbados in '77 at the invitation, then um, he insisted that I share his office, and um, I said no. I, I sat in there for a little while, and then. I decided I wanted to be in the newsroom in, in the thicker things there. But that was for me a, an eye opener as to, um, well, first of all, he's a super gentleman, but I think the, the respect that he showed me at, at that point. Uh, we've, all, we've all had an opportunity to grow and, and, and do a number of things, and I, I think that's important. And Peter is right in terms of our ability to have gone from CBC into other, into other uh, spheres um, not just in, in media. I can point to a number of people, and not just Barbadians, by the way. I remember Vic Fernandes hiring a number of students from the graduates, actually, from the University of the West Indies and bringing them into the corporation 
and giving them a chance to to grow and develop. One of them is is has gone on in, in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I'm sure you can remember her as uh, being an outstanding broadcaster and, and journalist. So there's no doubt about it being a field for growth, but we can look to the future. Okay, Dr. Lee Well, unlike Julian or Peter, I actually didn't work at CBC. Uh, my breeding ground was rediffusion. So, uh, but I, I did freelance. Uh, I was invited to do the lottery and by the previous general manager, Melba Smith, to do Meridian 60. That's how I first um, started appearing on television. And thereafter, I was asked to anchor the news. So my first time working fully at CBC was actually when I assumed the role as general manager in 1999. So I, I think my experience was a little at arm's length initially but definitely very much in the throes of things um, when I became general manager. And the internships and those who were there willing to share their knowledge with the younger broadcasters coming in, I think it's an invaluable tool. Um, mentorship is key. And I think that for many of the younger broadcasters, um, perhaps that is a missing link right now. Okay. And in terms of the broadcast authority and how they continuously connected with the CBC, um, how would you say that relationship is now? Well, the Barbados Broadcasting Authority really is uh, on the brink of transitioning for the 21st century. We are still unfortunately governed by an act that is woefully outdated. And while that is being revamped, um, the, the Broadcasting Authority has determined to focus on education um, of the public because there are so many nuances at this juncture. There are the issues of disinformation, but we also have uh, the reality of a very, um, I think, exciting journey that generative AI will afford us. Um, there has been for the very first time, I think, um, based on all the discussion about AI, the world's first AI safety summit. And coming out of that recently, uh, there were 29 governments that participated in it. Um, there are a number of areas that are being addressed. The, the question of the management of the internet and the implications um, of misinformation, the whole question of how we identify and how will our national broadcaster play a critical role in sharing that information with the public is going to be increasingly important as we go forward. There I'm, are. I'm glad you mentioned that because there are many who believe that mainstream media is now being pushed aside and you don't necessarily now need a seven o'clock news when you have all of these other social media news agencies, uh, you know, who are reporting um, not always the correct information. But how can the corp, after, you know, 60 years of being there for it as soon as it does happen, how do we now stand the test of time against uh, this kind of environment we now find ourselves in. Peter? If, if I could, before oh, you yeah, pass sure. to Peter, Wendy, I, I do want to say one thing, that, and that will be a great segue for Peter, I think. The reality is that the corporation has to reinvent itself. And the corporation has to embrace AI or artificial intelligence and leverage the power of it for its own benefit, not avoid it, not compete with it, but use it strategically to, for greater efficiency and effectiveness and to stay au courant for the audience that will say CBC is still relevant today. We can talk more about that, but I'll let okay. Peter respond. But I, I felt I wanted to underscore that component of AI for the CBC as a broadcaster. And I know Julian will want to respond as well because he recently delivered a lecture at the UWI on the said topic. But I'll come to you first, Peter. 
Well, I, I wholeheartedly endorse the comments of Dr. Leacock. Um, I believe, um, obviously, with so the advent of social media, you will see many changes. And as you said, perhaps traditional media would have suffered from social media. But the true test of time still stands because um, you still have to do your checking, your double checking, your triple checking. And you know that in terms of social media, I don't condemn it. I believe um, you've seen Barack Obama, you've seen our own prime minister using social media to good effect in terms of the election campaigns. But the issue would be really that now that social media has come about, an organization that has stood the test of time for, not only for Barbados, but the region in general, um, has it been pushed aside? Has it been shunted now because of the advent of social media? Um, if you cannot discuss the role of CBC over the last six years and not look at the role that CBC would have played, certainly in 1983, in the Grenada uh, Revolution or Intervention, however you look at it. Um, people were glued to the TV sets, they were glued to the radio. The Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation was the premier um, station that stood the test of time in bringing news, not only to the region, but throughout the world. CBC was the first um, person into Grenada in 1983. Milton Gibbs went down on a, um, a C-130 Hercules. And um, basically, um, that we stood on the air from um, 1983, and October when um, Morris Bishop was put under house arrest until way past February. And that was an outstanding achievement, five months straight, um, 24 hours a day. And we were telling the story of what had happened in Grenada and people were glued all over the world to what was taking place in CBC. So much so that you even had CBC under armed guard by the Barbados Defense Force 24 hours a day during that period. And that was a stellar uh, accomplishment for the Bar uh, Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation. I don't think in its six years it has even been surpassed. But certainly, we, as you said, we have to embrace AI. Um, I have my pros and cons about AI and I have my uh I have my um my 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 my, my uh, difficulties in terms of um what some some um developed countries are trying to to put on developed countries but I believe that um there are advantages and there are disadvantages and what we should do oh. is work on the advantages and if we can eliminate the disadvantages. Okay. Julian well, I've heard I've heard a lot about AI in, in not just here, but certainly up and down this Caribbean as far as the media fraternity is concerned. Um, I think I make it quite clear that uh, generative AI is a tool uh, in the same way that we migrated over the period and uh, embraced all the changes in technology for the media's use. There is no gain saying that we have and should be in employing um, AI as a tool for speedy production and dissemination of the information that we want to share with our audiences. Um, I think we as, as media people shouldn't succumb to the fears that have been expressed. I think we need to educate people. And in fact, we start with educating ourselves as to what tools are available for doing our work far better uh, you make a reference to the 7 o'clock news and its relevance. And you're right to raise that because we're not just competing with other media houses. We also competed with individuals who are distributing the news. If there's an accident at 9 o'clock on Bush Hall Main Road, uh, somebody with a camera comes along, takes that picture, shares it with the friends, and then they share it with other friends. And before you know it, it is all over Barbados. So by the time you come to the 7 o'clock news, what is your role in reporting that story? You certainly have a whole day in which to get a lot more reaction as to the players in particular, as far as that accident is concerned. That I think is at the heart of the storytelling, which still remains the most important function for a news organization such as the CBC. Okay. We have to verify, and that's the point that Peter was making earlier. We are the ones who verify. It is our responsibility to verify that the information that's being shared is correct. Other people who are walking around with a cell phone and taking photographs and sending videos around, etc., they don't have that responsibility. And I don't think we'll ever lose that responsibility if we're to do our job in media. 
And the AI is not just useful in terms of the news operation. It is in every sphere of the, of the enterprise, uh, whether you're producing video for whatever purpose, um, in the operation of the enterprise as well, whether it's finance or HR and so on. It really is a tool, and I want to repeat that. It's a tool to help us operate more efficiently in every sphere of our lives. And if you look at what AI is being made possible in the health sector, for instance, um, well, I don't think you want to turn your back on the possibilities of being able to diagnose cancer in a short order rather than waiting for months and weeks to find out exactly what is the stage of your cancer. So let's embrace it. Let's understand the, the benefits and use it wisely. Okay, and before we go to break, Dr. Likon, in terms of the broadcast authority and the fact that you said they're looking to reinvent themselves, is there any way for CBC and the authority to partner um, to be able to make that journey together in terms of developing more technologies? Absolutely. I think the days of regulators, which is what the BBA is, um, ruling with a, a big stick are over. <laughs> because in many cases, the people that um, authorities and commissions are charged with regulating, they are many steps ahead of the regulator. Uh, only within the EU context and their Digital Markets Act and how they've designated Meta, TikTok and um, others as gatekeepers, the, the reality is that we too, although we are smaller, once we post online, we're global. And therefore the reality of our existence must keep pace with these other developments because the reality is that there are only 10 countries that have agreed to embrace the regulation that uh, AI is being regulated to at this juncture. There is far more work to be done. There is a lot about AI that is unknown, but from where we sit at the Barbados Broadcasting Authority, it is clear that the broadcasters whom we regulate have to be partners. And there are some initiatives that we are planning for 2024, where we will be coming to the broadcasters to engage them. Hopefully we can indeed move ahead, but many digital networks and others continue to operate without the same diligence of regulation that is required now or is being asked of mainstream broadcasters. That's okay. something that Julian and Peter about double checking and checking because your license stipulates some of the things that you can and cannot do. It stands, digital networks pretty much have free reign. And, and those are some of the areas that we need to come together as a small nation to ensure that we keep pace with where the world is going because we're not immune from it because we're so small. Okay. And secondly, that we develop our own standards in order to manage that process. Okay, that's actually one of the areas we're going to touch on when we return. The standards which CBC has helped to solidify across the society and also our monopoly, the lack of competition. Has it helped? Has it hindered? The People's Business will be back. Welcome back to the program. Now, it's time to talk about CBC's monopoly. There is no other TV station at this point. Yes, we have CMC in the CBU, but it is not in direct competition necessarily in terms of the structure. And I see Mr. Rogers nodding, so I'm going to come to you first. Has it helped us? Has it hindered us? Would competition have made the corporation greater? Yeah, I'm the right person to ask that question to, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I have long, I've long felt that uh, CBC should have had a competitor. 
And I'm not the only one who felt that particularly. Um, I know that Barbados Rediffusion did apply for a television license way back. And of course, with the acquisition by the Nation Group, they also uh, continue to make those applications. I myself with a group of people, including people like Jeanette Lane Clark and Trevor Simpson and Linda Warren and so on. We made an application in 1986, actually, uh, to set up a second television station for Barbados because we felt that there needed to be a competitor in the marketplace. And surprisingly, on election night of 1986, uh, our, our national hero, first prime minister, the right honorable Earl Walton Barrow, to give him his full uh, title, announced in the victory uh, speech that he intended to give a competition to CBC. And um, all my all my partners, uh, you know, were on the phone calling and saying, yeah, you, you must be a genius. How did you predict this? But it was just that I had a very strong feeling about about CBC having a competitor as far as television was concerned. I regret to let you know that several months later, I got a, a one-liner from a permanent secretary saying that the government did not intend to give any additional licenses at this time. So that was 1986. Uh, fast forward over the years, um, none of the governments, as Peter referred to earlier, whether DLP or BLP, uh, saw fit to honor that commitment. I, I know that when I look back in history that uh, it was uh, former Prime Minister Owen Arthur, who also said that he intended to, to make that transformation and do a divestment. And I understand that there's talk now about a divestment of CBC. As to whether competition would have made CBC better, I think so. I think so from the point of view that it would have given Barbadian, um, Barbadians another option, one. Two, I think a lot of the people who worked at CBC over the period of time would have had another platform to go to. And I could see that growing the industry. And it certainly was um, very strong that the nation group wanted to have this t a TV station so that they would have the wherewithal to make the investment, yes. And I could have seen them growing uh, across the platforms, you know, from the newspaper, the radio, and the TV. But I think that if CBC had competition, uh, competition helps um, to, as I say, broaden the landscape, um, give the audience more options. And I think that the discipline required to be, to be a competitor would have been very good for CBC. I think that is really the heart of what is the challenge today. Um, I look back though, and I must say to you that I think that if the nation had made an investment in television, they may very well have gone down the road of making the kind of super investment that, that is the CBC. And we all know that if you had to set up a television station today, really and truly all you really need is a, is a warehouse somewhere and you get going uh, with a couple of studios and you do your production. And every stage in Barbados, every, everywhere outside is a stage for that matter. So there will be, there'll be a lot of options. Yeah. But I think, and I very feel, feel strongly that CBC needed to have some kind of competition. Okay. For you, Peter, having worked here, do you think a competitor would have made life any different, enhanced our productions, et cetera? Well, I believe Julian said it eloquently because I'm not a believer in monopolies or oligopolies. And certainly I think that um, you would have seen Flo, then you saw Digicel, you've seen the Barbados Light and Power, you've seen what's happened now in terms of the rate um, hearing and the award, the Barbados Water Authority. And you have to ask yourself if the island Barbados is better served by monopolies or oligopolies. I certainly don't think so. I think uh, even though CBC has done well in terms of uh, a public broadcaster, I think uh, Barbados would have been better served by having um, another um, television station. Whether it would have been the Nation Group, I have my um, say um, and my differences because I thought the Nation, they have the um, VOB, they have the newspaper. And uh, I don't, I think that the same way how you can have uh, public broadcasters in their reach, um, if they have monopolies, um, certain uh, attendant things would happen. I believe the same can happen to also in terms of a, a, a corporate um, 
or commercial entity. And I, I was not in favor of not the nation group having so much reach within Barbados to stretch its tentacles um, at the expense of uh, uh, other sectors. If you would have um, in, in involved other sectors and other non NGOs, etc., I don't don't have a problem with that. But certainly, okay. um, just not them having all, all the same. Okay. If we can move on now to the issue can I of just, can standards. I just, yes, you want I, to rebut something that I, yes, I don't I, want to make this into the nation. Remember, this is about no, CBC's sixty years. Yes, but yes. I, I, this is this is about this is about CBC. Um, I disagree with Peter on the basis of the of of concentration. What he's talking about is concentrating media in one in one hand. Um, but CBC is a concentration of media in one in one, in, hand. In one in one hand. So the the comparison is a little unfair. Okay, okay, I, we can I, say I need that. To rebut. No, uh, no, Peter. CBC, we, yes, what CBC, CBC does not belong to the Barbados Labour Party, the Democratic Labour Party, the NDP. CBC belongs to the people of Barbados, and to that the is nation. really a mistake made over the years. CBC belongs to the people, not to the political parties. Okay. Okay, Dr. Lika, if before we go to the break, we can talk about the whole issue of standards um, in the industry, because there have been some individuals who have passed through the court who have set the bar high. Um, but it seems as though, you know, we may be slipping here and there the whole advent of the said social media impact that um, is also bringing certain broadcasting standards into question. Um, do you think maybe perhaps the CBC could, as a possible income earner, have its own little training hub for individuals who are interested in doing uh, news on the spot, etc., and putting them through some sort of course here, which you pay for through trained individuals? So, Wendy, do you have another program lined up? I <laughs> Stop <it alone. laughs> you don't really want me to get started on this, do you? <laughs> Let me say a couple of things. Um, the first I would want to say uh, is that competition is an opportunity for the best to float to the top. So uh, performance is always your best revenge. So the competition ought not to in, in any way impede CBC or any other entity from shining brightly. On the matter of standards, and Julian and I have had many conversations on this because we're at Edom on the a couple of realities. The first is that how we train people and who trains people. You can train and tick a box. You can train badly. You can train bad habits. None of that helps somebody to transform into the breadth and the depth of what a broadcaster is versus an announcer versus a DJ. Now, there is a role for all of those dimensions. And we have seen the absolute burgeoning of DJs. There's a role for them. But I think those of us who are trained broadcasters have to take some of the blame for allowing the standards to fall as low as they have. Because there are other professions you simply cannot just get in. You can't just come in and try a thing. But we do that. We do that. Why are we allowing people who perhaps come to the corporation or any other entity with the singular goal of getting on TV and being a star. Television is an unforgiving medium. This is a profession that has standards. There is a way that you broadcast for an obituary, a state funeral, continuity announcing, outside broadcasts, and it depends on what the outside broadcast is. So these are all elements of a profession that you simply cannot look and say, Ma, I could do that. She talks a lot, you know, she, she, would, she would be good, she'd be good on, on, no. But we've allowed that to happen. And we keep really 
celebrating mediocrity. That is part of our suicidal effect in this profession. We are afraid to indicate to people where they have a strength. You may have a strength in one area. You may be excellent at producing a package, but you may not be ex excellent at delivering it. So you get the broadcaster to do that. If not, the, the corporation has a responsibility to adequately train all of their on-air staff with only the best. You can't be almost pregnant. You need to be the best to be in this profession before you open that microphone because your responsibility is far reaching and we need to be unapologetic about standards because I like you or I know you, it doesn't mean because you want to do it that you are good at it. And I have a responsibility to shield you from ridicule if you are below par. I have a responsibility to raise the bar, to help you get to where you can get to. And I believe that if we were to be, revisit all of what we have been accepting as adequate rather than the best, rather than being top drawer, which is what we are capable of. And CBC has turned out the finest. So there is absolutely no reason for us to settle. And I think that that for me is a huge, huge problem. We have to look at our training and, and determine whether or not we are training people to be their best because there is never, you know, there's, there's no destination when you are aiming to be the best. Excellence is a habit, but there is always another rung. And I feel that within the field of broadcasting, we have failed to maintain the standards we once had, and they have fallen so low that anybody with a glimmer of potential and promise is now lauded as brilliant. And that is really self-destructive. We need to be able to harness potential and allow that person to flourish by giving them the right training and the right tools to truly reach the zenith. I can tell you, and I'm well aware that Julian is the same way, I don't stop learning. There is always something else. And with AI, we know that there are other possibilities and other opportunities to get better, but you can always be better. And I think the challenge we have now is that everybody is a star because we know the minute, the first day you open your microphone, and I used to say this myself, every moly bread has its moly cheese. So the first time you open a microphone, you have a, but if you don't feet, keep your feet firmly planted on the ground and understand you are now starting, there's more to learn. I can grow, I can be the best, and I can be even better than the best. That's how we get our standards back up. So I hope that collectively we can wrestle this mediocrity demon. syndrome. Yeah, it's a demon. It's a mediocrity demon that is killing us. And this is a profession. I could want to be a surgeon in my handshake. I can't get it. Why do we allow people who just want to be a star, who have not trained as a broadcaster, who may even have a good voice quality, that's not what broadcasting is about. It's about cadence, it's about drama, it's about understanding how to tell your story effectively within the context you're performing it. And, and we have just failed miserably because, in that regard. Because there are many who don't see this profession as an actual art form. They don't see it as a profession at all. They assume you just get up one day, go before that microphone and do what you're supposed to do. But that's not it. And I am so happy to see that the same mantra that I live by, you live by as well. Do not celebrate mediocrity. And on that note, we are going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to have our parting shots for CBC's 60 years and its nation building role. And we're back and we 
We've run out of time, but let's have our parting shots. I will start with Peter Thorne and we'll see how good a broadcaster you are now because it's just one minute. And in that one minute, I want to hear your fondest memory of CBC and also where you want to see the corporation go. Well, my fondest memories would have been in the Grenada intervention invasion in 1983 where as i said cbc stood on the air for over four months and i thought it did a stellar production and a stellar job um you know um the late um prime minister of trinidad and tobago um to williams he would have said an article so sweet was a bitter pill for the colonies of the west and needs to swallow i don't believe that um Broadcasting has been bitter for the people of Barbados or the Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation. I believe that we have tried. I believe that CBC can do even better. I believe that as a public broadcaster, because it has its um, efficiencies and inefficiencies compared to um, a, a corporate, uh, a commercial broadcaster, and I believe that CBC has tried. So I really want to th congratulate CBC in terms of its mantra in educating uh informing entertaining people of barbados but i believe that it still has some way to go and i don't believe we should actually get rid of the family silver i believe that cbc had to tell the story of the people of barbados and until we can see some credible alternative which apparently not on the horizon if, even if we take the hubble telescope i believe that cbc hopefully will be in the in ahead in the years to come thank you peter over to you now julia <laughs> I like Peter's <laughs> references. <laughs> okay, um, my 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 fondest memory at CBC would have to be the night I anchored the news and a fly landed on my nose, and I managed to get rid of that fly and then to add the end the broadcast with, and by the way, and that fly, he's dead. So to the future of CBC. I still believe yes, there is a there there is a, a future for the CBC, but I don't think that that future really rests in its current configuration. I still believe that competition is uh, is an important element, and um, and I think that that will force the CBC to look at itself again, look at where the restructuring can take place to make it a far more efficient enterprise. And I'll just say one thing, with AI, I see a lot of possibilities in terms of putting more people in the CBC environment into production roles, into productive roles, rather than having the imbalance of more people in supporting roles, supporting functions uh, in the enterprise. And I think that is at the heart of the cost of the operation. But okay. hey, I'm available. <laughs> Julian has put himself back on the market. You, Dr. Leacock? I, I'll pick up where, where Julian left off and say that the NTI has 8880 AI courses that anybody at, at the CBC can take in their own time, as well as a media academy, use it. But my fondest memory of the corporation uh, wrapped into about three things, our coverage for Hurricane Ivan, especially with the Lake Terry Mayors going out. Uh, our Socaholics initiative and our four cars uh, during crop over when Tisha Hines did a, lim a limerick every day for six weeks. What that showed me was the heart of CBC, which is the people in CBC. And I think that they have kept the corporation amidst all the changes politically, and they can do again if we celebrate their worth and maximize their mindsets and their skill sets for the future. The corporation can reinvent itself to be ready for the 21st century. And I congratulate CBC on 60 years of service. I want to thank you so much. And I also want to thank our other guests this evening, Mr. Peter Thorne and Mr. Julian Rogers. As we said, Mr. Vic Fidanz was unable to be here with us. We were discussing the fundamental role of CBC in nation building over the past 60 years. And I encourage all of you to come out and be a part of celebrating CBC and its 60th anniversary. I'm Wendy Burke. Do have a good evening. <laughs>